Welcome back to the Gillette Health Podcast, where we give you tools to develop a balanced approach for health. I'm Dr. Kyle Gillette. And I'm James O'Hara, nurse practitioner. Today we're telling you about something that's better than testosterone. Yeah, I guess this is an urgent update, many podcasts. That's why I have these sunglasses on. Unlike last time we were correcting hormone advice, this time um, I do not have any eye surgery or eye, eye damage, but I guess I do need to take these off in order to look at this study because something better than testosterone where an endocrinologist is saying, if I had low testosterone, I would take this instead of testosterone. That sounds too good to be true. Yeah, and uh, we'll put this picture up of what the media thinks you are when you read through these articles and you know they're expecting you just to take the headline at face value. They think you don't know how to put a square block in a square hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's some type of alert right yeah. there. So face value, the Cliff's Note version of the study is individuals who are given terzepatide, low dose, two and a half to five milligrams, increase their testosterone more than individuals who took testosterone and also improve their erectile function more than individuals who took testosterone. And I'm looking at that and thinking about what I know about terzepatide. Certainly, yeah, you improve your metabolic health, you can improve your testosterone. Endothelial function yeah. as well. Yeah, for the erectile function. And I'm thinking to myself, what do I know about testosterone? And thinking, that doesn't sound right. So uh, we have the chart here of the before and afters. Mm -hmm. So uh, they all started below 200 nanogram per deciliter. So these are pretty low testosterone levels. Mm -hmm. And they- Well, for the average person, maybe not for an endocrinologist. <laughs> <laughs> They more than doubled in the trisepatide group, which is pretty good, but yeah. it's not necessarily optimal, right? So Obviously, a lot of this is the effect of less insulin and increased SHBG and better metabolic health in general. As you can see in the lifestyle group, um, they actually must have had them do real lifestyle things, unlike other GLP-1 studies, because their testosterone went up almost 75 points. Yeah, it went up from maybe you call 175 to just a hair above 250. So if this would have gone from, let's say their floor was 250 and they would have went up to 301, the urologist and endocrinologist would have said, congratulations, lifestyle cured your low testosterone. Correct. Yeah. Although not even the TRT group made it to 301, yeah. did it? No, the TRT group got up to 270, I think, let's call it. You know, I've got the graph here. In about half the states, that's considered a high testosterone level. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this is a little perplexing. Not why the trisepatide worked, not why the lifestyle worked, but why the TRT didn't even increase people into the normal range. Mm -hmm. uh, the study claims that they followed the titration on this. It looks like this is a testosterone from Europe. Uh, the UK is where I was able to find the titration guidelines. And Let's take a look at that. Here they are. So if you stop before you get to 300, oh, wait a second. No, you're supposed to go up if your serum testosterone is less than 500 nanograms per deciliter. Right. So they checked it, I think, 14 days into their dosing. Mm -hmm. And if it's below 500, they're supposed to go up. If it's over 1,050, then they're supposed to go down. That mm -hmm. seems pretty reasonable, right? This must be from a high T mindset. You know, uh, as a reminder, this is kind of an inside joke, but... A good friend of ours, maybe five years ago, said you can correct the testosterone level, you can naturally optimize it, you can replace the testosterone to where it is optimal, but you can't fix the low T mindset. And I think maybe there's some truth that, you know, the stubbornness that you see a lot of older males have that also probably have very low testosterone, and they just continue to have um, relatively few low testosterone symptoms. That being said, um, comment below which European country you think this is, because this looks like a high T country, not a low T country. Yeah. Your reference to elderly people being stubborn and you know, not wanting to take testosterone or not wanting medical care makes me think back to my clinical training. This is a long time ago now, mm -hmm. but there was a woman, you know, super nice, super healthy lady, 80 something years old, and she says, Depression's a bunch of hooey. Back in my day, you got sad, you got up, and you went to work anyway. I'm not saying that depression is a bunch of hooey, but there is something about the mm -hmm. power of mindset that I think is important. Definitely. That's a good way to put it. Uh, maybe a nicer way to put it. Yeah. So here's the target range, right? Two to four hours post-application. They want you to peak between 500 and 1,050. 
on they even have this little visual uh, you know if you're above that mm -hmm. titrate down if you're below that titrate up but the study authors apparently didn't follow the titration that they said they followed maybe they were wearing some glasses like that that instead of being sunglasses don't let any light through whenever they were looking at the protocol yeah Is they were a blind polar person yeah name here they were polarized glasses but polarized in a way that they're trying to get People one result polarized on their study away yeah. from testosterone and yeah. towards through appetite frankly it looks like they were trying to get this result they chose to replace testosterone to the point to where they could say there's appetite increased it more yeah but I think this is the first study I've seen that looked at, or at least emphasized the before and after t t testosterone levels with their appetite. So mm -hmm. if somebody is, you know, let's say they're overweight, have a bit of weight to lose, and they're kind of low normal on their testosterone, if they go up from, you know, say 400, 500 to you know, 600, 700, 800. Yep, which we have definitely seen. Yeah. It's helped a lot of people avoid uh, testosterone replacement, in which case, you know, and some people do testosterone replacement temporarily, but it is a good option, but it is not, um, it is not the same. So you can't directly compare them. In fact, right now in the comments, there's probably people typing, why not both? I did great on both. Yeah. Yeah. You certainly can treat both pathologies. You know, if you have someone, especially, you know, advanced in age and they're thinking about, well, I need to improve my bone density, improve my strength, improve my fitness, because maybe they've come around to realize that those things matter a lot as you increase and advance in decades, then you can certainly do both of these things at the same time. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You know, mm -hmm. Testosterone isn't the most reliable thing. If I write a prescription for someone for that, I'm not expecting them to lose 20% of their body weight. Mm -hmm. There are some people who do that with just testosterone, but you know, that's not every person. It depends on what you do alongside it, right? The lifestyle changes, which is going to be foundational and the trans appetite is just a much stronger guardrail. Yeah. For example, if you lift weights on testosterone, you'll instantly gain at least 20 pounds of lean dry muscle mass. I've How much from, testosterone? <laughs> uh, enough to get to 270 or however much these people got. But yeah, uh, no, it's a good point. If you're taking testosterone, the fat loss and metabolic benefits are not going to be as strong. So my alternative title for this paper is Fat loss and metabolic benefits, modulating SHBG and area under the curve insulin, much better for terzepatide than testosterone replacement. Yeah. That, I don't think that's misleading at all. And we're not against some benevolent clickbait. Maybe, and by the way, what benevolent clickbait is, it's what we do. It's um, giving people actionable takeaways and good straightforward advice. But the title is a little bit more exciting than, for example, the actual title of this study. Yeah, the title is something like, The Media Thinks You're Dumb. Yes, <laughs> that's something that you would click. Um, but uh, I think that's a pretty good summary. I don't know if there's even that much more to go over. But in summary, I guess, uh, do you agree or disagree with the endocrinologist if you were hypogonadal, presumably with symptoms, total T under 200? Would you uh, just take terzepatide instead? How about this, two statements? Someone can improve their hormone and metabolic health by taking terzepatide. True. Someone can improve their hormonal and metabolic health by taking testosterone. Also true. So it doesn't have to be this binary, you know, fork in the road that you have to go one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So this is where shared decision making comes into play. Uh, the people in this study didn't get shared decision making because they were assigned to their arm, right? You like this, you're, this is the plan you're going on. This is the plan you're going on. Mm -hmm. You're only getting lifestyle and placebo testosterone. So yeah. that was, there's three branches there. So I think both can be true. I think they're both great medications when utilized correctly and they can both have significant downsides. You know, people have died directly or indirectly from both of these. So, mm -hmm. you know, talk with your healthcare provider about the risks and benefits. And if, you know, one or both of these things are right for you, or if you're already optimized and you don't need to add extra things in, that may be the case as well. Yeah, we hope that this is giving you good tools to develop a more balanced approach to your health. We obviously like it when people are knowledgeable, uh, perhaps more knowledgeable than their endocrinologist. That was one of the big shticks that our friend Derek with more plates, more dates got, is uh, they would always say, wow, like you literally know more than 
endocrinologists and just by listening to this YouTube channel, you know more about say SHBG or um, you know the accuracy of lab assays than endocrinologists and urologists. Sure. So we hope that we've given you that information, but at the same time, um, you know we're also trying to, I guess, warn you against um, studies like this because if you Google something or you know use your LLM AI to look for something, you will find a study proving that. Yeah, that's right. This is actually going to get plugged into the LLM, you know, evidence-based databases now. And the LLM will say, yes, terzepatide can increase testosterone more than testosterone. Wow. Yep. Just it, prompted better. Yeah. Anyways, uh, not to rabbit trail too much. Um, as always, leave any comments, whether they're nice or mean or in between down below. And uh, let us know what you would do if you had a testosterone below 200, presumably with symptoms. Would you jump towards um, terzepatide, testosterone, maybe both, maybe neither. And how would that uh, discussion process with your doctor go? Um, would your uh, doctor even consider either one of these if you're not, um, uh, you know, I guess seeing a specialist in this area? Yeah, cost could be another factor. But in any case, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And may God bless you with health and happiness.